If you're like me, then the Bungie Dev update brought with it both good and bad news. The good! Well, by fall 2018, looks like things are going to be getting a lot better. The bad, by fall 2018, that's a long ways away. So between here and then, I put together a list of six awesome games that I think Destiny players will really enjoy and will offer you a good way to ride out the next seven, eight months and try out some fantastic games that you may not have gotten the chance to play. I mean, it'll probably appeal to the Destiny feel-goods in some way. Not all of these are direct overlaps, but there are certain tropes and traits that I think Destiny players will resonate very well with in these games. So without further ado, let's go! <laughs> Borderlands 2 is obviously a very easy comparison. A looter shooter that can be played co-op with your friends, and that's how it should be played. It's critically acclaimed because it's an amazing game with a ton of replayability. I do recommend play this game with a couple of friends. If you have a group, this is a perfect Friday, Saturday night game to sit down in, continue progressing the story along. And when I did say replayability, I truly meant it. This game lends itself to so many playthroughs, has so much content put in there. And if you're one of those people who loved collecting random rolled weapons in Destiny 1, always looking for that perfect power boost, Borderlands 2 is going to be your dream because it is so awesome when you acquire that just rock solid weapon that fits perfectly with your character, your build, your teammates. It really is a magical experience. Now, Borderlands 3, we have seen some engine demo stuff in 2017, but I do hope we start seeing some more teases and get a little bit more concrete timelines when it's coming out. Regardless, this game can be picked up for very inexpensive on virtually all platforms. I can't recommend it enough. Check out Borderlands 2 in the interim. The Division is a super easy plug as well. I know a lot of Destiny players, myself included, played The Division when it came out for a few months, ended up putting the game down, and you have a very solid reason to have put the game down. However, Massive has done the impossible and have just slowly been ticking away and improving this game over time, and now The Division is in a phenomenal state. It definitely will resonate with Destiny players from the sense of your weekly activities, of course pushing your gear score higher, and it's an investment type title, so it really will feel a lot like Destiny in many ways. The New York setting to me doesn't seem like a perpetual place I want to play in forever, not as open-ended as the space of, of Destiny going out in the universe and different planets, but The Division really has evolved into an incredible game that you can sink a big amount of time into. And Massive has earned a lot of praise and a lot of trust back with their community. I really hope Destiny 2 can undergo the transformation that The Division has over the last few years, because really, The Division community is in a great place right now, and a lot of players are returning and I'll be giving it a go over the next few weeks as well. Path of Exile. This one may seem a little bit strange for those of you who've never played an isometric ARPG, but it really will resonate a lot with Destiny. It's almost identical when you compare it down to the core concepts that form the engagement loop. Essentially, it's all about working your way through a story that gets progressively more difficult as you acquire better and better gear. As you rank up, the amount of customization for your particular class is insane. It may seem overwhelming at first, but Path of Exile really does a great job of taking a very concrete experience and allowing players to invest thousands upon thousands of hours within its world. Another game that I really recommend to play co-op with some friends, this is really Diablo 3 done right, and a lot of the hardcore kind of ARPG fans just praise Path of Exile to no end. I have a few friends that just have thousands and thousands of hours in this title. Really check it out if this is something you're interested in. Continuing down a little bit different pathway, we're hopping into the MMO space, and although these won't satisfy your shooter fantasies, they definitely will give you a big sense of a grand scale story, and of course those RPG elements. Final Fantasy XIV, speaking of story, is a wonderful game on PC and PlayStation 4 that will deliver one of the best stories in an MMO ever. It's a grand scale title that will feature lots and lots of exploration, incredible music, pretty fun combat, and I have to say it's one of the best MMOs ever to implement console controls. Playing this game on a controller is not only functional, it's actually quite a bit of fun. So don't be afraid if you're on the console to even use the controller. I know some PC players who like to use the controller as well. One of my good Destiny buddies, Azure Spirit, picked up Final Fantasy 14 midway through Destiny 1, and he hasn't looked 
looked back. Absolutely loves the title. I've sunk about 150 hours into it as well, and it's great. It has a very long form story that's going to play out over the course of many, many hours. You're going to get engaged with the characters. You're really going to see what happens next. And I've never really had that in an MMO quite as effectively as I had with Final Fantasy XIV. PVP in this MMO, generally not what the community gathers around the most. I mean, it's not like the forefront selling point of 14. So if you are looking for a sweet PVE, great music, great story kind of MMO, check out 14. While we're on the MMO kick, World of Warcraft for you PC players. This is one of my favorite games of all time. I put a guide out about it two months or so ago, and it is just the behemoth. It's been around for forever, been playing it for over a decade on and off, and there's a reason. It's a great game, and Blizzard is continually adding, updating, and progressing things for further. The raids. The raids in WoW are phenomenal. Huge selling point. They have absolutely mastered big encounters with other players, learning how to do different mechanics in a way that is fun and not only like just challenging, but a lot of layers of difficulty. Easy to get into if you want to start raiding through the LFR system and then progress into things like normal and heroic. And finally, the PvP is actually phenomenal in WoW as well. This game can supply you stupid amounts of playtime, and it's a great, great title. It can be a bit expensive to get involved with because it is a $15 a month subscription and you must own the base game. Also, Final Fantasy XIV is a subscription-based MMO. Also, check out my guide, Shameless Self Promotion, if you are interested in getting into WoW because I can break down the most cost-effective ways for different players to get into WoW before you take the deep plunge and buy the latest expansion. And finally, we conclude with Warframe. If you've been watching my channel the last four months, you know Warframe is awesome. It's a great game. It's free to play. It's available on virtually all platforms, and I can't recommend it highly enough. It will not supply all of your destiny feels. None of the games on this list will, but they will have little elements and bits that will remind you of some of the bits and pieces you enjoyed in Destiny. Warframe nails, absolutely nails the sense of progression. As you keep getting deeper into the star chart, as you keep getting more powerful mods, more powerful weapons and frames, you just become stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's a very addictive thing. Most of the knowledge is stored outside of the game in the wiki or within the codex that you can read about, but it is not a hand-holdy type of game. You will have to go out and do some homework, watch guide series, and that creates, I think, a much stronger sense of engagement or pride with the player base, who is also very very nice. I do wish Digital Extremes would invest more time into doing some in-game tutorial stuff that helps guide the players a bit better. A lot of players will abandon Warframe purely because a lot of the learning resources are external, things you're going to watch on YouTube. But it is an awesome title, I recommend it, check it out if you have the chance, and at least progress, you know, a little bit deeper into the star chart because some of those later quests are phenomenal. So there you go, six games that will help you ride out the uh, wait between now and fall 2018. Honorable mention definitely goes back to Destiny 1. I've been playing it off and on. It really is still in quite a good state, and if you haven't completed your record book, it might be fun to go back, maybe roll a new character, do some raids if you have some old buddies who still have their consoles. That's a great title to at least get those Destiny feels, and hopefully, you know, my optimism isn't huge for Bungie with Destiny 2 before Fall 2018, but maybe some of these updates between now and then are really going to improve the game. We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, play stuff that's fun, try new things, enjoy these new adventures, and if I missed anything, let me know about it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs it up, subscribe to the channel, hit that alarm bell to be notified. Also, I've been streaming on Twitch. Check out the Twitch link in the description below. I appreciate anybody who follows and hangs out. We've been having a good time there as well. Have a good rest of your day, and I will see you next time.